Welcome back to Workers and Resources. We are back in our micronation with our low pop challenge up to over 40 workers and slowly increasing. The year is 1969 and yeah, we are currently struggling with our money. We've recently started a logging camp on the eastern side as well to try and alleviate that, help a little bit. Not sure if it will, but we're gonna find out. We still have the option to maybe build a sawmill to increase the profitability of our logging camp a little bit. But otherwise we need to grow our population so that we may actually run our clothing factory and make a bit more money. Hello Satellier, welcome. I didn't want to say it, I didn't want to say it right at the start. I had to help myself back, but yes, it is a very nice year. Too nice, in fact. Maybe we can get two more people, so we have 69 people at, 60, at the age of 69. And then increase our health by two more percent. Wouldn't that be nice? Last time we set up our heating plant slash incinerator area over here so that pollution does not pose any more problem to Lolona. And we can also run the area with workers from Brelov. Um, we're also building a new bridge over here with prefab panels. <clears throat> Maybe to expand into this area, I don't know. Another logging camp in this area shouldn't be a problem, taking one or two workers from the buses to maybe get a few more uh, tree trunks. And maybe I should build a sawmill. Maybe actually producing my own um, boards for construction and for export would be a good idea. It would increase the profitability a little bit. I'm not sure if I would start overdoing it though. There's a potential that that could happen. But yeah, I don't see anything wrong with maybe having a sawmill right across the street. Or a sawmill behind the building, if we can make sure that they can still walk onto the side. We could have everything in the same place. Or I could have the sawmill at the heating plant area. But the sawmill itself would not create that much pollution. 1.2 tons per year, it's barely anything. Boards are fairly low demand on manpower. Yeah, one worker could handle a lot in here. And we only have like two workers inside the logging camp at most anyway. They are very low demand when it comes to manpower. So if we had, for example, the sawmill in this area, would they be able to walk to this area? didn't really build it in a way to easily connect it but if they can walk to here from the bus platform up here it would be a possibility but right now it looks like it is slightly outside of range um, however if we had uh, an asphalt footpath we could probably make that a reality with not much difficulty Hello, Hoysater. Back on the horse again. Could you quickly elaborate on the challenge this time? The challenge this time, uh, this time is that we started our Republic with 10 migrants. And the goal is to get to a thousand people. So we started with like 16 people out of which 10 were workers and we're trying to get to a thousand. So we started out with not the lowest amount, the lowest amount would be 5 experts, but we started out with a fairly difficult task of trying to get 10 migrants 
all of whom were regularly educated, there was no one with a university education, were trying to grow them into a sizable town and republic, after which this would have succeeded with the challenge. So that's the goal, get to a thousand people. I guess we could have the sawmill elsewhere and then have a dedicated storage, it doesn't need to be in this area. The sawmill can be somewhere else and we could give it a storage. Right now we're just gonna run logging, see how the money does after we finish construction. And then make a decision on if we need to improve things with the inclusion of a sawmill or if we just continue running things and maybe just adding a few more logging camps to it. Um, but yeah, the challenge is basically trying to keep our population alive and running everything with as few workers as possible. We're re still utilizing a lot of foreign workers which are costing us a lot of money. And our money reserves are slowly dwindling. So we are trying to hopefully see some improvement there relatively soon. The only um, income we have right now is um, wood. Two logging camps on the western border, one logging camp on the eastern border, recently established. And the main income is uh, waste incineration. So we're importing hazardous waste for a thousand rubles per truckload and then bringing it back to the border after incineration. Trying to make a profit from that. Trying to wring any profit from that endeavor. I don't see any other industry that could be run with very few workers and be profitable. As I said last time, gravel could be something that can be run with very few workers, as is oil because for oil you only really need the maintenance and the vehicle repairs. But the oil reserves on our map that I found, that we found, were over here, quite far away from everything, and sending workers here for maintenance and a fire station is a little bit out of the question. I don't know if we have another oil field that is closer towards town on this side, but the cursory check in this area has not revealed anything, so I believe there is nothing else we can do. So maybe we have to resort to an expanded logging industry. Gravel is fairly profitable per workday, but fuel cost will eat severely into the profits. Yeah, I don't know if the fuel cost for exporting profit by truck would be worth it. So. The clothing factory would be the best and I guess I guess even if we have very few workers the only downside is that the building will require maintenance at some point and that will be very expensive but if we have one worker going into the clothing factory and producing clothing for all of the citizens we wouldn't need to import clothing anymore we could just do it with fabric which would make things um, slightly more profitable, profitable as well. But I feel like we have to run it with at least 10 workers continuously to take to um, pay for the fact that there will be a machine replacement and a building maintenance at some point. I really like the fact that the logging industry is profitable. It's a nice addition to our uh, waste incineration, which can also be run with very few workers and is even easily profitable by using foreign workers as long as you don't overdo the import of hazardous waste because that can drive down profitability very very quickly. Just one pop short. Can we can we do it in less than two months though? What's the population? 81 years old, 79, 82 there's a high chance that, oh you're 82 and yeah, there's a high chance that it might not happen, but we'll see. 
If it does happen, I will exclaim the correct phrase for it. If I notice it. But only if it happens this year. We do have increased birth rate. So we are expecting there to be another ch few children soon. Hopefully we don't overdo it with like two children. That would be too much. If we jump over the number, that would also not work for us. But yeah, the goal right now is grow our population enough where even if we can't run all of the facilities, I think running the clothing factory would be a really good benefit to us. And maybe I should set up the clothing factory just to have it. I would like to see if we are profitable once we finish the construction of the bridge though. And the bridge building is just, I don't know. It is not necessary to have an upgraded uh, prefab panel bridge here, but I was encouraged to do that. And I don't disagree with it. It's always nice to make your infrastructure as efficient as possible. Thankfully, we don't have to maintain the bridge. That would be unfortunate if we did. We're nearing the halfway point of filling up the first residential building. 40 workers. We have 13 workplaces that we can run with this. Most of them are education related. One person with a staff member is handling the research towards getting us distribution offices. And then we still have a school. And workers might spread themselves out between other facilities depending on whatever they need. It has happened. It is 1969. We have 69 people in our society. And believe me if I would say that this is very nice. I wonder how profitable the explosives factory would be. Does it need a lot of workers to run? That's a good point. I don't remember about the explosives factory. I have used it once. It does need about as many people as um, as a clothing factory. Has a few more import inputs, but we do produce wood ourselves, so that would be nice. Um, pollution is quite high. Doesn't look like I would prefer that in front of the clothing factory right now. The benefit of the clothing factory is that it will take care of export and also uh, localized demand for shopping. So we have a two for one with this. The benefit of the explosives factory seems like it would benefit from us already producing one of the input goods. But that's about it. And needing five less workers. but. Yeah, running at minimum levels is a given for all of these right now. We're still losing money. Um, I don't know how much we lose due to prefab panel input, uh, imports. 1.5. Okay, so we're 400 rubles away from that. Also had some mechanical com com components imported recently. I don't know why why they were imported. Because we do have a lot of mechanical components in storage here. But maybe they ran out and they just refreshed the building. That could be. Because it doesn't pull the mechanical components automatically from here to this building. Do I have planning on farms anytime soon? I don't know. Farming is uh, probably another profitable endeavor that we could attempt. If the farming industry would pay for itself, uh, that's definitely possible. I would not do anything with the um, um, with the materials, so the crops would just be exported. But starting with a small farm, seeing how we do, and then improving up on it is probably a good idea. I would like to not build a large farm because that would also entail a large farming area and an additional large storage for it. The initial setup for the farm is always the highest pain point because basically setting up a farm with any form of grain silo right now would take up uh, the remaining money that we have. Technically you could just have a field at first next to the town for a harvest of fuel. I don't think placing just a field without a farm would be useful for us because we would 
so that with mostly foreign workers and that would definitely not be profitable I think. Or at least it would be barely profitable. Um, we get like 200 tons out of a big field at 100% harvest I think. But that's with machinery. I think if you sow it with phone, with only workers, the harvest is reduced by a significant amount. Let's say we get, instead of 200, let's say we get 125 tons. I don't know if that's true, but let's just assume it. So each manpower costs us 15 rubles, 15.4. That means we would need to receive 30 rubles per um, export to make it profitable. And yeah, we don't get that. So with foreign manpower, running a field is not profitable. But yes, we could, once we have it in a sufficient enough domestic uh, workforce, we could just place down fields and not run it with a farm building. That's true. And also, when we don't build a farm, then we can't fertilize the fields. Big field gives around 300 tons with 100%. Alright, I will look that up right now, because I don't remember. Big field. Uh... I have no idea. Harvest. So it looks like if workers are in the field, it will produce 40% less crops. Big fields make about 300 tons, so we would receive 10% would be 30 times 4 is 120, so we would receive 180 tons of crops out of a big field. That would make the large field profitable with foreign workers. I wonder if that's a viable start, running a field with just foreign workers. You would need to micromanage it so you only sow the field when it's like um, when it has regained its own fertility over time and then send the workers in when it's over 100 percent then you could probably run a farm a field with just foreign workers still losing money uh, i guess i will do another aluminium trade if i find the truck for it thought it was in here. This is the steel one. It's the aluminium one at the western border. It's not here. Let me check the lines for cargo. Where did the aluminium vehicle go? Was it used as a replacement vehicle? That can't be. I don't know where the truck went. Maybe I used it for something else. Maybe, or maybe I moved it to hull steel instead of aluminium, and that's why it's... That is, that is why it's over here now instead. Makes more sense. Could probably have two fields and alternate between the two with two year rotation. Yeah, that seems possible. Would be quite micromanagement intensive. I think a small farm is probably doable. I will build a small farm without a storage and then export as we harvest. Not sure we're gonna finish it in time.
but some more money would be appreciated. And you gotta make, uh, spend money to make money. place down the fields so the fertility starts going up. I will probably start with only two large fields. I don't intend to put anything in a pretty order right now. Um, don't really have the, the possibility to do that right now. thinking of a challenge for myself, an agrarian society run for each factory need to produce 1000 tons of crops annually. Okay, so uh, the midwest of the US basically. That would involve a lot of trains which could be cool because you need to export it, otherwise I don't think you want to store that much. But a thousand is not... a thousand is not that much. Like... I guess... For a small farm it's not... Like I had a... Uh, my large farm had like... I think seven to eight thousand... <laughs> crops produced. Seems doable. Seems like... I would... I would put it on the population count like... For X amount pop of population, you need to make that much, that many crops or something. Or you need to set yourself a limit of you have to export X amount of crops to succeed in the challenge. Because otherwise, it's mostly like a guideline for your run. It's not like a challenge. It's a, it's not a goal. There's a lot of factories one needs. No, that's just a, that's not true. You can run without factories. Just try a low-tech challenge. One research per settlement and one research every thousand people. And the researches that don't unlock anything don't count. And then try that run. That one's quite interesting. I really recommend it. Not sure we're going to set up the farm in time, but we'll try. The fields have high enough fertility that they can be sown and harvested. Um, and yeah, we'll export the crops from the farm directly. Probably with our last free distribution office that we have. Or just with the distribution office for um, domestic supply. Using the two trucks in there that can transport it. Should be good enough to get everything exported during harvest. That would be an annual income boost that we would receive. And since we're not overdoing it with the amount, it shouldn't also drive up the fuel price and cause us any problems, I hope. Okay, I will have to run an aluminium export. Now after that we can also bring some more steel here. But for the time being... Please do a run of aluminium instead. I need more money. Our US side is profitable. 
right now. We used a lot of US currency already. We went up over 700,000 US dollars and then we started draining the cash over there. Because, well, I spent a lot of money building the heating plant and the heating pipes. That was a... That was a... A rash decision that cost too much money. And now we're struggling on staying positive. Before that we were making money. Right now it's not looking as great anymore. I'm not sure what else has changed. I mean, we're sl the other thing that has changed is we're basically getting more foreign workers. So we are hooking up another customs house. So we doubled our expenses on foreign workers. Speaking of foreign workers, we lost about four domestic ones. Um, we probably have to build our clothing factory to make sure we get that constructed while we still have money. Oh, the pipes are so expensive. The pipes are more expensive than the heating plant itself. It's ridiculous. And I built like 2.25 kilometers worth of pipes. Took a lot of steel to build that stuff. I like logging cams. It's the first industry I tried it. I tried when I started playing Workers and Resources back when it came out. And it made me feel like I was playing spin tires slash mud runner in, in a strategy game. I haven't used it much until recently again. And it's a very calming industry. Very few workers. Very autonomous, just put in a few workers, they do their thing, don't care about the waste or the water demand, everything is fine. My first probably profitable industries were distilleries, saved quite a few runs early on, yes. Distilleries do work well, especially if you hook them up to running water. Or What I do is I send a dedicated water truck into this distillery so I don't have to spend money or chemicals on making my own drinking water early on. Works quite well. Okay, I would like to tell our construction office to stop bringing workers again because I'm getting quite annoyed at spending construction office workers when we don't have to spend the money on them so I will force you to go back and let's see if I can find the construction office in this area if I still have it I might have removed it my construction office that I manually assign to things, I did remove it. So that um, we only spend manpower on constructing things when it's absolutely necessary and we don't dump 60 workers onto a construction site that doesn't need any manpower. Because it can be built by machinery, especially when the resources are missing. keep an eye on maintenance and building reconstruction projects because they will still need workers but I will probably drop a much smaller vehicle in there to handle them this bus is drawing too much money for too many workers it's ridiculous we'll just drop a micro bus in so they can get some workers to normal construction sites and the construction office over here. I don't know what bus I bought you. Uh, micro bus. Okay, so you're handling, you're handling things. 
you're already assigned to the building reconstruction. You're basically waiting for the resources and then you can send the workers for the maintenance out. Excellent. Groundworks is done. Two more construction phases. First the buildings and then the mechanisms to handle the crops. Should definitely be able to build that up in time. Might even be able to build this building with domestic workers. They could walk onto the construction site. But no, we'll send some... Okay, mm, it's 120. I'll add the microbus over. Let the microbus deal with that. We'll get one tractor, two harvesters, and the rest is trucks, I think. Could also get two tractors and two harvesters, both fields harvested and sown at the same time. And then we can harvest them throughout the whole harvest season. I think that's probably a better idea. Okay. Well, get on it. Send out the bus. The bus is probably going elsewhere. Building the bridge. Increase that. No, lower the bridge priority to low. It's not important right now. Building reconstruction and farm construction are more important. We were probably losing a lot of money for the for the large bus bringing workers from Brelov to the bridge all the time and basically draining our money that way. I'm spending a lot of extra cash on foreign manpower unnecessarily. So it's a good idea to move the bus out to try and save a bit. Might be time to actually continue with research here. Oh yeah, the birth rate increases back. Let's do that. Always gotta continue doing that. We need more population. I'm tempted to build the clothing factory. I think the clothing factory was also profitable with foreign workers, but it could be a money sink. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit worried. Let's see. How much capacity do we have in here? Six. Uh, two sowers, two har two harvesters, and then only two trucks for bringing in the crops. I mean, the travel distance is quite short. It's probably going to work out. Yeah, that should that should be fine. And then maybe add a few extra fields to the side of it so we can run a natural crop rotation instead of using fertilizer. So we have something for next year to sow instead. our construction office vehicle to build this even if it takes a few extra workers
and we will assign the workers to be picked up from here because we don't have that many workers here so it can't pick up too many. Although it will interrupt operations in the town for a little bit, I think that's still going to be okay. We're also supplied and doing quite well on running our settlement right now. Health and happiness are looking really good, so I'm not too worried about taking six or seven workers away from normal operations right now. That should be manageable. We'll need like 14 workers to finish the current construction phase. And then we can build the last one with a few extra workers maybe. Population count is going down, but that's to be expected of the population graph. We had a lot of births, and then sometime later we will have a lot of deaths, but we are, will have to compensate with improving our birth rate again. 29 births, 20 deaths last year, still population growth happening. Just a lot of deaths during winter when the temperatures drop and the life expectancy goes down a little bit. Even with the improvement in um, cold resistance for our citizens, it's not quite sufficient to make sure that everyone uh, manages. Our heating should be sufficient though, but they still have to go out of their building to go shopping, etc. I hope we turn off the AC during winter inside the shopping center. That would be annoying if we didn't. And that would be a reason that people might get sick. Okay, we didn't quite do half way with the construction, so we will need one extra bus after that. But yeah, this should get done in time for sowing season. We have one month and a few weeks to go. Definitely or very likely going to finish sowing and harvesting both fields. Where's the aluminium truck? I guess I sent it out during winter, so it's going to take a while. Uh, from here, I think. Didn't load the aluminium yet, so still on its way to the customs house on the western border. That will give us another income of 30,000, 30, transferring US dollars into rubles. We're getting three thousand, about two and a half thousand US dollars per month, so I think we can take some money from them. It's basically our income. How much are we making logging wise last month? Two and a half, two point three thousand versus. Six thousand. I think we need to upgrade our trucks. I think we need to turn these into better trucks. Also, I don't know why you're not moving. Is there not enough felled trees ready for transport? Looks like it. Up this to three workers. Apparently, we don't have enough capacity in here, as so we're not bringing enough workers to the uh, uh, work site. Let's up this to five workers and make sure we chop down enough trees. Yeah, in my experience, most deaths happen manually too much due to the cumulative effects of winter. Yeah, the life expectancy of citizens drops during winter as they experience some impact on their health. That's usually what happens. Last construction phase, bunch of steel. Thankfully, we are using our, well, steel from the west. We're gonna get more after the aluminium delivery is done. So this construction phase shouldn't be too expensive. At the customs house, you may export um, crops. And then you'll take crops from here and try to export them. 
the internal storage of the small farm being relatively large compared to the capacity of vehicles. So I dug up my calculations from before the waste update. Back then, clothing factory was import with imported goods. And foreign workers would technically speaking be a small loss, even before factoring logistics. But this was done with calculation with price on day zero of the Republic. Okay. Now we have enough uh, wood in the forest, definitely, but you're still not moving. Oh, you're waiting for repair, my bad. Wait a minute, why is there a Mark E model in here? Why is the long haul in here? What the hell? That's not supposed to happen. I don't know why that happened. Maybe that's where my vehicle went. I don't know how I got assigned here. I can't assign it to this, so I don't know what happened. So assuming you were the aluminium vehicle and you were probably on a route and running maybe an aluminium delivery and somehow triggered a repair? I don't know. According to the calculations, you'd lose about 30 rubles per ton plus transporting, but values may have changed and if you use your own workers, it would turn a profit. The clothing factory is very profitable with your own workers, that's for sure. But yeah, calculations were... I did the calculation on stream, I think twice, and I still forgot what the results were. Uh, except, I think, yes, the... Except that, uh, not, not how... The results, I know, it was not profitable. I don't remember the exact range. It was a, bare, a, a small loss, if I remember correctly. Per worker. Alright, finish the repairs and... Let the vehicle back out on on duty. Mm -hmm. Got all the construction materials for the farm. We have one month to get it built. Should be not a problem. We need like 40 workers to finish it. Then we'll need to bring fuel here. Make sure to not bring liquid fertilizer because that stuff is ridiculously expensive. Unless things have changed. I will not be getting that material. Just fuel, thank you. 60 rubles per ton of liquid fer fertilizer compared to solid fertilizer which only takes 8 rubles. After sowing season, we can. After we bring the initial supply of fuel, we can probably upgrade this road. Then, once sowing season is done, we can pr probably upgrade these to gravel. I don't think we need to do that. I think it's going to be fine. Just leaving everything as dirt. I don't think throughput issues will be a problem at like two fields. But who knows? They might even try the other two. I would like for these fields to be used next year, so we're only going to use two fields this year and then use these ones next year without fertilizer, just doing crop rotation. With liquid fertilizer you can quite easily, easily reach 200% fertility, which is a lot of crops, yes. And then I'm going to run into the issue that I won't be able to harvest all of them, which would be a problem. I probably will also assign the distribution offices to the fields directly. Mm -hmm. So once harvest season starts, 
the distribution of this can assist with harvest directly. And then the year after we will hook up the other two fields. Maybe I'll, I'll probably give them solid fertilizer, it's not that expensive. I want to see what the uh, sowing and harvesting situation is like. If we can manage two fields, or maybe more than two fields. I think two fields is probably going to be the limit. Once I have distribution offices, I can probably fill this with three tractors and three harvesters and put the trucks in its own distribution office, basically changing responsibilities a bit, making sure we can run a few more fields with the small farm. Okay, we need a few more workers, but we're going to finish this in time. And we'll have to spend some more money on getting the vehicles, and then it'll take a while before it actually turns a profit. I'll put you back on the route of getting us steel. Since we already have the room for it, you can go ahead and do that. I must stop off, take care. Goodbye, Satellier. Thank you for showing up. Uh, let me also give you a shout out. Have a good day. I think we can run the research at the cost of some education right now. I am not going to micromanage it. We're just going to use our professors 50-50 and we'll have more students soon. After the research is done, they can all focus on giving them a university education. That'll be, that'll be fine. Profitability is really low this month. Didn't do much with uh, hazardous waste, it looks like. So, our hazardous waste full? Maybe. Maybe. We'll have to incinerate faster, keep profitability high. Put a few extra workers in here. Probably up the number of workers picked up by the bus route again. I don't think the I don't think skimping on workers on the work route that actually makes us a profit is the right idea. We shouldn't be overfilling it with workers, but we should give it enough that it can do its task without problems. Maybe we didn't give it enough workers to do so because our waste storages are running full quite quickly now that we have asphalt roads. Sowing season starts in a, in a week or so, but our farm is now constructed. We will assign fuel delivery. I find the distribution office for it. Two harvesters, two tractors, two covered hull vehicles. 
and there goes our money. Let's hope it pays for itself. We'll wait and see. I will tell the farming equipment to wait inside and not drive out in search for a gas station. They will have to wait inside until we brought some fuel in. Oh, doesn't have power supply. Uh, great. In that case... Go look for fuel yourself, I guess. We'll drop free gas station in the vicinity. Default setting for fertility is 50%. I'm gonna up that to 80% for the purpose of crop rotation. Sowing season will start either tomorrow or the day after. And then we should be getting our fields ready. Looks like it starts on the 3rd of March. Let's make sure no worker walks onto the fields themselves to work here. That would be a little bit silly and they can't reach it. Good. And there's our sowing season. We might be able to use four large fields with two tractors, two harvesters. I don't know. Where's the other tractor? Um, assign yourself that field, please. Thank you. Got enough fuel here. Yeah, I'll leave the I'll leave the roads as dirt roads for now. I'm not gonna upgrade them. We can probably sow all four fields. I don't know if we have the capacity to harvest them. Especially if we're using fertilizer and we're getting a lot of harvest in. Don't think so. Running the repair station without its own warehouse is a little bit awkward because of the low storage capacities. the incineration running now. No workers, but we are now finally draining our hazardous waste again. So it's running perfectly fine again. Did our aluminium transport? Still 5,000 uh, rubles in the hole right now. Let's see if that changes for next month, or even this month. 
How's the price for hazardous waste? It dropped to 750. Hmm. Still, still good, I think. I think we are still going to keep running it that way. I wonder if I should add another waste truck. And see if it drops down much further or if we just handle the extra waste truck. Are you in range of a technical service? Let's check. I need this um, technical service to be in range of our heating plant because it might want to have its waste delivered away from it. Not necessarily the internal storages, but the mixed waste storage in here needs to be emptied out. Otherwise we could run into problems and I didn't put any waste trucks in here, so the waste trucks from the town will have to handle this. But yeah, let me get another waste truck for the hazardous waste import and see if we can earn a little bit of extra profit. Will the price decrease so much that we basically lost out or will it be fine? I'm gonna find out. Right now the price of hazardous waste went down quite a bit. But yeah, let's see. I think I might have to build the clothing factory and hope to wring a profit from it soon. I still think I need a larger population for it. We're down to 39 workers again. Population growth hasn't kicked in yet, because the research isn't done yet. Let's get some students through. Five students right now. Um, I could focus everything on research. Yeah, let's focus everything on research. In both facilities, I guess. Let's even shut off this facility right now. Like, uh, not not that way. I didn't mean like burn it. Um, please extinguish it. Thank you. I meant like, okay, that's very few firefighters, but it is slowly extinguishing while it's being damaged. Could have sent the other fire truck, you know, we had like another fire truck here with more workers. I guess not. What I meant to do was disable that one so we don't have any workers here anymore and just run our medical university for now to get the research finished hi i have a question building sewage treatment how can i use the output dirty water that i get at the output i don't quite understand the building i'll deliver dirty water and get less dirty and what now thanks hello jacob the point of the water treatment plant is that it turns very polluted dirty water into less polluted dirty water. It does not turn it into drinking water. So you use these facilities to put in polluted water and then the output water you either need to dump into a lake, a river or pick up by truck and sell it at the customs house which is the least desirable choice. What this allows you to do is have a sewage discharge next to a settlement with a lot of sewage coming out that does not pollute its surroundings. Because if you run drinking water for a larger town and you dump the sewage, the raw sewage into the nearby water source, 
The pollution from that might spread towards the town and get everyone sick. So a water treatment plant is useful if you have a water source that is quite close to your settlement. And you want to dump the sewage in there, but you don't want your people to get sick. So you treat it before you dump it back into the environment. Otherwise, if you can just dump it somewhere far away, you don't really need it. You do not get any drinking water from it, you just reduce the pollution impact of the sewage water. Thanks for the explanation. You're welcome. No problem. Okay, let's finish the research and then get our students back on the education train. Two thirds done. Uh, we need more people. Price is back to a thousand one hundred rubles. So, I'm not complaining. It seems to be very volatile. But yeah, let's run four trucks. Maybe increase our profit a little bit. Even if the price fluctuates a lot, maybe we can increase profitability here to the point that uh, we don't have to run our US currency dry, because the main concern right now is running bankrupt. And if we start taking out loans, that would just accelerate the process. A sawmill could help earn a little bit more profit from these uh, logging camps. I think I'll start with a sawmill on the western border and see how it impacts the profitability in this area. So last month we imported aluminium to bring to the eastern border to get a profit. This month we imported steel. If we didn't import the steel we would have made a profit of 2000 US dollars. We'll compare that to another month at some point but yeah let's get a sawmill in with maybe a, a storage for it. That would accept workers. We would only need like one worker here. Then we'll need a road connection for the construction and eventual fire services. And then we'll have a storage there next to it where they dump in logs and there will be some re room for tr um, boards to be picked up from. And one vehicle will stay in here always carrying the boards to the customs house. A small open storage should be enough, I think.
Um, let me redo that because we will need electricity and I need to build it closer. Just remember that electricity is a thing in this game and we need to pay attention to that. Water and sewage does not matter for the sawmill. Productivity will be enough, I think. So we'll have the sawmill over here, I guess. Maybe a slight bit to the side to not impede the footpath past the electric wire. That will give us electricity. And then we need the storage again. And the roads. And we're done. Let's... the storage a little bit off to the side if we can I'll use that wait a minute Storage also needs electricity, right? Otherwise the loading speed is slowed down because I... Th Let me check. What's the electricity consumption? 350 kilowatts, so yes, it does need electricity. Um, I'll probably build it back to the road and just set up a substation here. I'm gonna go with the original layout. Sorry for do redoing this all over. I guess that means we could have another logging camp right next to it. So I could hook up a logging camp to the sawmill directly. Uh, the footpath, I guess we're going to use that. Just drop a storage here and a logging camp as well. Once the excavator is done with its footpath, I guess. That way this logging camp will not need any transportation of its um, logs. It can just directly go into the sawmill. We'll have our storage here. The workers for the logging camp will have to walk to the road. Hopefully that is in range. Let's give it a quick test. Yes, it is. And then the open storage. Too many criminals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't, can't change it. It's... It is what it is. Excavator is still busy. Fire station over here should have no problem putting out fires in the sawmill or logging camp. 
We'll need one extra truck running between the um, storage and the customs house. And the other trucks need to bring it into the, into the storage as well. Or directly into the sawmill. Probably directly into the sawmill. Then we can use the output storage just for boards. Oh, we're making a profit again. Lovely. Looks like our hazardous waste is more profitable nowadays. And we're also using less foreign manpower. Looks like the excavator is done. Maybe if I pause the game I can sneak in the flattening of this terrain. Before the, before the excavator is used again for more footpaths and or road construction projects. And then we need electricity. Because I decided that I would build it far away enough where that is okay. Let's invest a little bit more into our western border. We need to reclaim the money uh, used. Construction office was on fire. Damage of 32% wear. Should be okay. Uh, no building reconstruction task ongoing right now and the bridge seems to be done as well cool that means we can demolish the other one again so i guess it was good to have the other bridge because we were getting some money for ourselves and some more steel i still don't know why the other open mile truck managed to sneak its way into the construct into the repair station as a working vehicle for some way uh, reason kind of strange That's looking much better. We're down to 37 workers. So... But we do have four students who are 21 years old. Or older. Who would like to jo uh, join the workforce. So they have to finish their university education fairly quickly. On the other hand, I could just force them into the worker pool right now. You're halfway done. You're 23. Slightly more than halfway done. Almost done. Okay, if you finish, I think the rest I would move into the workforce as regular citizens, maybe? I guess I can just work for them to finish their university. It shouldn't take too long, right? It's probably gonna work out. Yeah, I should keep our population high and well educated. Now that the money issues seem to be looking less problematic. 
think we have a little bit of spare time. What's the profit on her truckload now? Less than a thousand, but still fairly high. We'll keep running at four vehicles then. Seems to be a good change. As long as our incinerator can keep up, I guess. But there seems to be no problem with that at 10 workers, so keep going. It's been 10 years and well, we're still at around 40 workers. We've built kind of a lot of things. I think I'll turn off the police station again. We've been spending workforce here that... Yes, we'll know, we know that we have crime, but we can't do anything about it right now, so... Monitoring the crime is nice and all, but... I'll just... Use our workers elsewhere, for the time being. Knowing about it doesn't help me. Much rather run another facility with a few extra workers. If the sawmill on the west is successful in increasing profits, then we'll also build one over here and put in another logging camp. Probably next to the heating plant and then bringing workers and... Well, mostly bringing um, cut down trees to the sawmill. I think the sawmill would probably also be in the heating plant area. Although it might be better to have it here, because it's the shortest distance to the customs house. Connecting it to our existing logging camp seems like the smartest idea. Yeah, we could have the factory connection in this area be used for that. Then have a road connection come around here into the storage area. Everyone in here, research please. And you go get your edu education in this area instead. We got nine university students ready to join the workforce as soon as they finish their education. Plus three of them which are, in addition to that, older than 21 years old. So we need to pick up the pace a little bit. No research in the medical university right now. Seems like everything's under control. They're spreading out their resources a little bit um, unfortunate. But I mean the constructions are ongoing and mm -hmm. running fine. We're gonna send the construction office bus here to the construction where it makes sense. Like the factory connection that can't be built by the machinery. Mm -hmm. And then also all of the building constructions where we need additional workers. Six thousand rubles income last month, even with eighteen thousand rubles spent on foreign manpower. That seems to be going really well. That means we can run our settlement and our heating plant area reliably while still making enough money to save up for the eventuality when we have to replace our vehicles, do building maintenance and so on.
four people at the age of 21 or higher now. All of them being um, very bad criminals. Yep. Uh, we're working on things. 33% criminality. <laughs> well, they will have to finish their studies. I mean, the university is running pretty much full time. There are some slight interruptions here and there, but they should get their education now fairly quickly. I hope they didn't slow down their education because they were waiting for workers inside the party HQ. I'm going to turn this one off. We don't need distribution offices right now. Everyone, everyone go, go in the medical university. Don't spend time here. Stop being criminals also. This one needs to remain a two-way factory connection because we will also unload... No, we won't unload locks here, sorry. I, mis I misspoke. We only have finished boards in here and we unload the wood inside the logging... inside the sawmill directly. Things could be sped up with more vehicles, but I want to run a very tight ship here. I don't want to spend more money than I need to. And we don't need to speed up constructions anyway. Looks like sewing was already successful and I mean we've already grown the fields halfway. It's only May. We could start sewing these fields already, but we'll do a we'll do a crop rotation between the two fields. So we'll assign the other two fields once sowing season is over and they can sow them next year at a much higher fertility also mm. and then they should alternate between the two fields Five students over the age of 21 now. Well, I hope you finish your studies soon. Okay, one of you's finished their studies. As soon as their free time ends, they join the workforce at the age of 22. Not too bad. Doctor visit, very important. No problem. And your free time ends and you move over into this residential building, right? Yes. Walking to the pub. Apparently to work there. Interesting. your studies and hopefully by the end of the year we're back to our regular education cycle we would be at 43 workers if we finish all of the university educations but four of them are currently stuck inside the hall of residence trying to finish their studies before they actually join the workforce 
So that means I guess the birth rate also isn't going up for them because they're currently still busy studying. done because I need to make a few extra assignments for the construction of this. And I guess I'll manually assign it to the demolition of this. I'll also clear up the terrain here a bit. Uh, the ground is looking a little bit scuffed. So we'll restore the soil. good as we can, I guess. That'll remove the compacted terrain a little bit. The grass should regrow fairly soon. is running full time now. Especially since I set it to 5 and 5 instead of 3 and 3. Seems like it's attracting so many workers that it's actually able to run full time. It's also attracting a lot of um, highly educated workers working as staff, but I guess that's okay. season is over. Uh, no it's not. Yes it is. Right? No it's not over. Oh no it is. Uh, I thought it would say that in here but it doesn't. Well this, it only says that if you have a field assigned that is not being able to be sown anymore. But yeah we'll assign the fields now. They can be used next year when these ones uh, recover themselves. And then at the end of next year, we'll have to see what their fertility is like. If they will be ready for the year after, and then we have four fields inside a crop rotation. Without any fertilizer. Let's check the profit on hazardous waste again. Eight hundred and fifty rubles, so it's going down. But it hasn't dropped below seven hundred and fifty what it was before, so I think we're still okay. Lots of buildings over here that will need to be built. distribution office for this area would be quite nice to balance everything instead of having to use a direct route. Also have to replant some trees here. I 
guess we'll assign the construction office over here already. So we can start work there. And then on this building, because it basically will also switch its construction phase to the next one fairly soon. Waiting that long <clears throat> without getting a justice system up is not very good for our uh, crime system, that's for sure. We'll have a lot of cleaning up to do once we get to the point where we can run our courthouse, prison and um, police station. But for the time being, until we get to I would say 100 to 250 workers, I don't think it's possible. There's other things that we need to do, like grow our population instead. And run the other facilities which are more important. Even if the criminality rate is going quite high, One serious crime this year, one serious crime last year. It's getting to become a problem. That might need solving. But other than bringing in more workers to man the workplaces and trying to solve it early, I don't know what to do. Like the, the main problem is the prison keeping people locked up full-time. I would need to assign our workers to go to the prison before all other facilities because the prison would require everyone to be there at all times. Well, not everyone at all times, but they would need to be on standby to send workers there so that the workplace always has workers and there's no interruption and where prisoners could escape. Ideally, we would like to use foreign workers in that for the fact that they come with decent loyalty and also known loyalty and we could make them work there with a loyalty restriction that would allow us to um, send the most loyal foreign workers to the workplace so that we could actually improve the loyalty of our prisoners while reducing their criminality. Assign all workplaces here and let them figure things out. And then we'll have to move over the materials. We'll have to get a few extra vehicles for this logging camp. And then one more truck bringing resources from the storage into the customs house. And the other vehicles will pile up in a waiting line here to unload their um, their logs. Alternatively, if I have if I had left a little bit of space, I could have used the road cargo station for the lumber deliveries here. But maybe the small one can fit in here. Do we still have a small road cargo station? I thought there was another one. Did they remove the other road carcass station? Looks like it.
Now we don't have the space for that one here. But I thought there were two. I'm not sure where the other one went. The other one only had like two connections and I thought it was a little bit smaller. It seems like that one vanished. Oh well. students who are older than 21 so the number has been going down and the amount of workers has gone up we have eight students who are younger than 21 but are also currently going to university so in total we have 10 people currently going to university ready to join the workforce fairly soon hopefully the other ones will finish their studies way sooner than you guys No judging. I'm just a little bit disappointed. We'll try and run research here. While still allowing people to study potentially. We'll see if it works out. A little bit of cleanup with the free buildings that we have, making a little bit more space here for other workplaces. Doesn't really interrupt anything. But once I start cutting down trees here to put in the sawmill, I might want to have a road go through here to use this as a connection instead of trying to do something like that. I'm not sure yet. We're still waiting on the western border to finish its construction to see if this is actually a viable strategy. I think it will be, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. We'll have to limit the amount of workers at the, cast, uh, at the sawmill to like one worker, maybe two workers. This is going to be a decent amount of um, wood that will go through here. But yeah. Definitely not too many workers necessary. I don't want the sawmill to be the uh, bottleneck though. So I'll have to make sure that that doesn't happen. more deliveries of bricks and then we can go to the last construction phase and our sawmill would be done and the logging camp I guess we can bring the additional vehicles here already which are gonna be 
three U377 loggers, which are going to cost us 30,000 rubles. We will make that investment. And to pay for that, we will send out the truck trading aluminium again. And we'll get another truckload of steel. From the western border. So in total we'll probably pay like 45,000 in US dollars to get those materials, which will recuperate the investment made in the logging trucks for sure. Okay, finishing up the current construction phase, and then we can move over to either the woodcutting post or the last construction phase of the sawmill, depending on what the microbus thinks is best. I don't think this is a microbus, I think this is a proper bus. It's a small bus, but it's a bus. Might have to increase the amount of workers we get in this area. We might have to replace our personal vehicles with um, Mars 309 buses. I would like to make sure that we have enough workers in the fire station and other facilities to make sure we don't run into problems where things could burn down here and we suffer another catastrophic loss, like with the logging camp. Because once we have U377 logger trucks in there, um, those things were a little bit expensive. down the repair station to one. Don't need to be quick on the repairs. Unless of course it's the um, fire truck that's being repaired. That could be a problem. If that one is being repaired while the fire happens and we only have one fire truck. Could be a little bit painful. to the sawmill because that's where our road crane is at. Fortunately didn't have a road crane at the wood cutting post, but we'll do that after the sawmill finishes construction. I also need another uh, truck for carrying the export goods from here to the customs house. No, I think I'm going to change things up. I think I'm going to use this as a wood storage and I'll just have a vehicle, one vehicle at the sawmill standing around. I think that's going to make more sense. So that means we can already change our truck route to go to the new storage. If I set this up to hold logs instead of boards. So your destination will now be uh, this storage instead of the customs house. Then we'll get another vehicle for the sawmill and it'll pick up resources from here directly. 
And now we might have to handle waste management because this is going to fill up at some point and then it won't be able to start running anymore. So we'll have to get a large waste truck in a technical service, I guess. We can use the one, one of the ones from the demolition office because it doesn't need as many anymore. And if we have to do another demolition that needs to be done. We can temporarily take one of the, or the only, uh, technical office vehicle. That'll be fine. Other ways does not matter. I think I'll start providing drinking water as well. Especially because it will double the productivity of workers in this area. Just take a very cheap water truck, I think. From the west. I guess we don't have much choice there, so. Get a water truck. Let's not worry about sewage. They will handle the sewage themselves. A little bit of a health risk, but what do we care? Now the water truck will also bring water to the woodcutting posts. So we might be able to reduce the amount of workers in those to only one worker. If we really want to optimize things further. Just haul wood all day long from the sawmill to the customs house. Sorry, I needed a different vehicle. Uh, that's okay because I think I still have an open hull vehicle that can take its place. Yes, after you've made your delivery. You're going to take the place of the truck that I just assigned. And you will go onto that road instead. This one can't haul boards, that's why that was a mistake. But yeah. Now we can make that assignment. Holding the correct material. And that'll be the perfect vehicle for that task because it has such a large carrying capacity. And we still have one slot open for removing waste or bringing in drinking water. It's not going to be a lot more profit, but it's going to be more. We'll have to wait and see how uh, many more workers we have to add to this area. Okay, and now the water trucks are trying to go here when there's no room. probably have to build a water substation so that doesn't happen. We're slowly developing this area way more than I thought we would. Uh, this... Hmm. I guess the sawmill can have its own deliveries and we'll just deal with the logging camps. that both of them would be connected, but it's not quite enough. 
anyway. We'll have a water tank here. That'll handle the water deliveries to the repair station and all wood cutting posts and the deliveries of water to the sawmills still have to make, be made directly. I don't know what the internal water tank is, I guess I could check. Uh, does it show here? No, it does not. Shouldn't be more than a cubic meter though, but yeah, we can handle those deliveries, I think. Do we have enough workers and uh, throughput in this area though? Or do I need to assign more fuel delivery? Fuel delivery isn't a problem, as long as people can still drive over the road, it should be fine. As soon as the truck is loaded, it'll things will move along. Just the fuel truck and the water truck together were a bit too much. Okay, we need to increase throughput here. This is not enough. I hope we don't run to the point where we will actually need more than one truck for the export of boards. I'll have to wait and see. Yep, traffic jam. If I knew that I was going to use this to this capacity I would have probably built the logging camps with a storage in mind where the trucks could pick up from the storage directly and leave the delivery route for fuel and I guess water undisturbed. I think I need more... I, th I think I need larger vehicles here. We'll get three Mars 309 buses. Put them onto the same route. Reduce their capacity to about like eight workers. So... 30% maybe. And then move the uh, the personal cars into the scrapyard. I don't think we need them anymore. And if we do need them, then we'll get newer ones later on. Okay, so start you. Make sure to set the route to 30% capacity of loading passengers. And then go to our scrapyard and move in the old three beetles. Sorry, Porsches. We won't have to run the scrapyard just yet. But once we get to start it, running it, um, there will be some vehicles ready to be scrapped. Looks like we got 46 workers now. No one over the age of 21 trying to study, so seems to be running quite well. Our research towards distribution of this is ongoing. And the medical university just doing its thing. A 
population growth has stagnated. We had a larger dip. But hopefully it recovers. Our health and um, happiness is quite good. I think this was probably when we started increasing birth rate. They all died at approximately the same time, so it's bound to happen. We had some of these dips early on. Hopefully we'll recover from that. I didn't know you could highlight everything here if you moused over that. Interesting. No sympathy for religion here. Alright, can we run this at a throughput? That is sufficient. Because right now we're getting a lot of wood in here. And I might have to increase the amount of workers to an even higher number. It can balance itself. Like the workers it gets with the fire station. But I don't want to have a traffic jam where... The trucks start piling up here and then the truck picking up boards doesn't get through anymore, so... It looks like we might have to employ a distribution office in this area because the amount of boards is going up quite rapidly. And we're still... We might need more vehicles, we'll see. Also I have a dedicated uh, woodcutting post here, so... Yeah, the sawmill can run at a very high capacity. That means I can bring... A few extra foreign workers. And probably get another truck. Well, let's wait and see with the um, boards first. If this starts running full on boards, then yes, I will get another truck. And run them as a line. lot of wood here. It's... <sighs> Can we run the sawmill at like almost full capacity or what? I don't think so, but feels like we're nearing that. All right, let's get another open hull, long haul truck. Sign the route. Cancel. Going to the depot. And we now have two vehicles exporting boards in. Yes, we do need them. There's a lot of um, boards ready for export. Maybe if I removed all of these, I could fit in in the road cargo station here. one would fit but it would def it would tip it would modify the terrain quite uh, worrisomely Jesus Christ so much wood I don't want to get a third truck but I might have to Maybe not, no. The wood is slowly going down. Seems like two trucks is, is enough. It was just looking bad because the storage hasn't been emptied out yet, but it's working on the internal storage first. Mm. And two trucks seem to be sufficient. As in, it's slowly reducing the amount of wood we have inside the building. Let's give it some time. Right now it's running uh, full time pretty much. It's increasing the profit a little bit. I'm not going to transport the boards over here. I think that would be a bit pointless. We will have our own sawmill. Right now I don't think it's the right thing to do yet. It doesn't. I don't know if the West will be profitable from that. 
there was quite a lot of investment in vehicles and um, we also had to crank up the amount of foreign workers going there so we'll have to wait and give it some time I want to be at least like that say 3,000 US dollars maybe 4,000 even we'll see how our profit looks like at the end of September Happiness went down a little bit. Health is okay. Building quality is still at 94, so it seems okay. Birth rate could be better. 20 children right now with 46 workers. We need more. Maybe I should build another residential building. The benefit of having another, another residential building would be that I could tell one building with a few individual workers to always go to our um, um, justice system. Like, make sure you always fill the prison first and then send other workers to the police station and the courthouse. So it would allow me to specialize our workforce a little bit in what they do. I think the price of um, hazardous waste went down again. Nope, still at 870. Did the price of foreign manpower power go up? 16 rubles versus 14.7 US dollars. So yeah, it's slowly increasing. No profit this month yet. Are we bringing too many workers to the heating plant area? No, seems to be okay. Maybe a little bit too many. Okay, 46 workers. Population count still going up. Uh, we did shift over some new currency from US dollars into rubles, which is why we aren't looking as bad. But this month isn't looking too good. Maybe we imported something else like electronics or fuel. The fuel price going up. That is a concern. With all the increase in like vehicles on the western border. At some point the oil price and the fuel price starting to tick up. That's that's a worry. Ongoing building maintenance. Only one. If I had a technical university, I could probably research the chemical plant and then try to scrape together the resources for it. Wood, crops, oil and gravel and water mixed chemicals. Uh, the fields have been harvested. There's a lot of crops in here. We also need to tell you to load from the farm. Not just from the fields, so please get on it. I might have to put up a distribution office just for this task. Otherwise, we're not going to get all of the crops 
to export. on that I mean at some point those vehicles can be become part of a proper distribution office for some other tasks I guess but yeah for the time being we should start exporting uh, the crops Loading from the field directly is also okay. That cuts out the middleman of bringing the, vehicle, uh, the resources to the farm first and then to, to the customs house. You will need repairs soon, and you're only going to repair up to 2% wear and tear, so getting older now. 3% now. Uh, after your export, we're gonna trigger your repair. We'll also increase the, the workload of the customs house again, thanks to the farm, so... Could be a problem. Thankfully it's not gonna be a problem for heating, but for shopping it could be. Not having enough workers. After you enter the customs house, I will request repairs. The income from crops is not too bad, actually. That's 325 rubles. Maybe the price of crops is going up. Did not keep an eye on that. Yeah, it's, it's creeping up. It'll give us an income. And it will also hopefully keep the price of food down. And eventually we might make our own um, food to a smaller capacity with a food factory next to the farm here. Small crop storage food factory. Should be quite nice. I think the trucks from here plus the trucks from the distribution office, five trucks in total, could farm a distribution office so we don't bring the crops from the fields into the farm and then to export, but export them directly. Until we need our own crop storage here in the food factory, of course. But I don't see that as a thing right now. We did have to buy vehicles, but if we didn't, we would have made some money already this month. Um, the income we're making right now is looking rather juicy, but we also have to remember that that's a seasonal thing, so we only have like two to three months of income and then the rest of the year the machines will just stand around waiting for things for other things to happen if these two fields do not recover their fertility until the end of next year or the start of the year after I mean then we will have to employ some fertilizer but I would like to use a crop rotation. Alternatively, I could put three, field, um, three sets of two fields in crop rotation. A three field crop rotation is the standard. Not for this game, but like I think for reality. Just to allow fields to recover their nutrition sufficiently. That might be a really good idea. Uh, like setting the minimum fertility to 150 and then setting up enough fields so they spend two years to recover their fertility to the maximum default. That might be a really good idea with the small farm. Could lead to a problem where more than the usual amount of fields go to 150 and then you run into issues of not having enough um, equipment to deal with it, but you know. Hopefully a distribution office can catch that. 
we should be able to bring all of the harvest in, no problem. The trucks can carry 10 tons of crops. That's five deliveries per field, and then we're done. And we have two months, to, one and a half months to go before the temperature starts killing off our harvest. With two fields, two large fields, at around at around 100% fertility, we expect about 600 tons of crops, and we made 550. So we weren't quite at 100% fertility when the fields were dropped down and harvested. But still a good harvest nonetheless. 17,000 rubles we expect from that. We're making a lot more just exporting boards. But this is um, split between rubles and US dollars. Did I miss some disaster? Weren't you at 66 pop before the farm? No, you didn't. Uh, we just... I assume we had a population dip from when we triggered population growth. All of them grew up and then went away, so... There was no... There was no crisis. At least not that I'm aware of. We just had a few extra deaths at the same time. So I think with the birth rate increase we're gonna see those dips in population more frequently. So if I check this here... to last year. If I check for, let's say, happiness... There's no real dip of anything, like everything was fine with satiation, happiness, health. Health is, I guess, important. There was no real problem. There's a little bit of a dip here, but that was already after the population drop, so I don't see a problem from that. So no crisis, at least none that I'm aware of. I assume it's from the increase in population growth, getting a lot of children at the same time, meaning you get a lot of deaths at the same time later. That is my assumption. I blame the Egyptians. Um, shh. Over here you don't see a pyramid underneath the terrain. What episode of the series is this? Uh, I think this will be the fifth or sixth one. I need to check. I think the sixth one. Uh, yes, the sixth one. still have to set the fifth one for schedule but there's not many episodes after so I think there's let me check again I think there's one visible episode 4 then the fifth one which no the fourth one is scheduled for being visible in 20 minutes then the fifth one tomorrow and this one is the one after so I'm not not as far ahead as I was with Karabadak but I did a lot of streaming with Karabadak because I was streaming while I was on vacation and I was enjoying the game a lot. Okay, two trucks will be enough. I have too many workers in here. We'll put it down to eight workers. Um, 50% workers sounds fine. I think we're set okay now. Since I have a technical service, I think I'll also get a snowplow. Just to make sure that our fire truck can get to where it needs to go. I'm spending more and more resources on making sure everything stays running and doesn't burn down in this area. Um, one kilometer, you can reach the logging camp over here. No mud roads, mainly the asphalt road, gravel roads if you have spare time, I guess. Also, hello, Angus of Magnus. Mangus. Welcome. So, we're going through all of our wood again. Salmo should be able to keep up with things. The sewage tank is filling up, but we're not caring about that. Once the filling reaches a certain amount, it empties itself out and causes pollution. So basically they take a bucket and handle things themselves. 
I assume it affects the health of the citizens that works here, so not our concern. I hope it doesn't increase the the price of foreign workers if they have to work in adverse conditions, but haven't tested that. Just don't want to spend money on a sewage just a sewage truck. Have we reduced the price for them because they all got sick? Me? No, I don't think it will reduce the price. I think you always get fresh, good workers. Uh, looks like their health is around 90 plus. Their satiation is like really low. It's 80 plus, lower than 90. Crazy. Weird. But yeah, we're selling a lot of put, uh, wood and boards to the border over here. Definitely not the Egyptians buying anything. Definitely not, no. Over here, we're just still so, uh, selling raw uh, wood, which is fine. I'm not sure about the profit just yet. We only made three and a half thousand last month. So we're, we didn't quite double our profit. We did have to spend a lot more on vehicles. I don't know if running the sawmill with foreign workers helps profit that much. I think running foreign workers with the woodcutting posts, yes. But the sawmill might not actually be worth it, I don't know. It's still making a profit and we'll keep it run, running like that, but not convinced just yet. At least we'll finish the first research towards our distribution offices soon. Ten years after the start of the game. We had a population of 69 earlier. 70 even. Maybe. But back then a lot of them were children right now our worker count is already up to 47 which is higher than before when i tried to do an actual start with boards i believe the main reason i wanted things made into boards was to reduce the amount of resources i had to ship not because it really made money well we are using it to make money all the money we get from the western border is just wood and boards and it was paying for itself before we implemented the sawmill at least. We have to see if that is still the case. We did spend a lot more resources on new equipment. And we're spending more money on foreign manpower to run these things. Yeah, I mean the difference between wood and board. I think the problem for us is that cutting wood into boards with foreign manpower is probably ill-advised. But it's so quick. What's the conversion rate? It's almost... It's, okay, it's 18 to 14. So, 9 to 7. Woods, wood, so let's say 10.75 times 9 divided by 7, so 13.82 for boards, and we get 15.8, so there's a little bit of a margin there. I think on the western border it didn't really make much of a difference transportation-wise since we're handling things so close to the border. I was basically trying to increase profit. I think we can reduce the amount of workers in here again. How's the switch looking? 128%. I don't know when it ticks over, if it was 130% or 150%. But at some point it basically 
lowers the amount of sewage here by itself. I don't know if it affects the workers there, if it does. I assume it just causes pollution in the area and that's it. Not 100% sure. There it did. It ticked down to 110%. The health of the people here does not look affected yet. And they only work here for 8 hours, so that'll be fine. Okay, we have way too many foreign workers here. Uh, let's reduce the amount back to 40%, 30%. 8 workers, 8 to 9 workers per bus. That will be sufficient. And we'll leave this at 10. So they can basically choose to either work in the sawmill or work in the fire station. Both of which don't have any sewage being dealt with, so pick your poison. Here's the waste truck, as expected. Removing mixed waste from the sawmill. That one would not empty itself out. That one would not dissipate into the terrain, I don't think. But we could dump it onto a storage rather than exporting. We could just put it onto a storage here and just have it dissipate. Um, since it's all like materials that just go away by themselves. I guess that would be fine. Just have a free dump here. technical service mixed waste goes here and then we don't have to pay 50 rubles for whenever we have to empty out the sawmill I wonder if I could have I guess I could connect a dump to the sawmill directly and then it would probably move the waste in there and then we wouldn't need the waste truck Not sure if it works like that. You could run it like that. But other industries also move waste out into, well, the garbage transfer at least. It might be able to push the waste into this um, dump instead. And then we don't need the garbage truck anymore. And the other dump. We'll try. Uh, dirt road is fine. And this can be built by an excavator only. Doesn't need any workers. Uh, then I guess you can go back into the demolition office. Mm -hmm. We'll try handle waste generated by the sawmill differently. I don't know if the waste dissipates fast enough, I guess that could be a problem, but we'll see. This will have a decent amount of storage capacity, much more than the internal storage. And the factory connection can also be built by machinery. And we do have road construction equipment in here. Yesterday I lost like six months of game progress, forgot to switch my autosave on and had a crash. Oh. Why did you turn off autosave? But after replaying that time, I think I saved a lot of money. Okay, so kept in hindsight to the rescue. Then you have the space for a switch truck. But 
I don't need to handle sewage. They just spill it into the environment, it's fine. They need water for productivity, they don't need sewage handling, it's fine. I had all saved off one day because I was in a testing game and AFKing a lot, so I turned it off. Okay. I usually have autosave on, even when I'm testing. Because at the end of a s normal session I make a save and then the autosave doesn't really matter. The autosave is just there. But I guess it happens. Okay, now the two trucks seem to be sufficiently able to pick up all the boards being cut down. Yeah, let's hope, see if it works with the mixed waste. If it doesn't, then we can still use a free dump, but I assume this will work. Also, I was finding that my autosaves didn't really work unless I chose to autosave to zip. Autosave to zip? I haven't seen autosave to zip yet. I know that my workers and resources folder is 40 gigabytes in size, even though Steam says it's only 8 gigabytes, because my save folder is very, very large. I need to clean up some old series. Okay, it seems like we have found maybe a good, a good amount of workers. We need more workers though, like, the amount of workers walking into the sawmill seems to be quite low. Maybe they are slowed down a little bit by the construction machinery and it'll pick up pace a little bit later again. Well, it'll be interesting to see if the factory connection will actually force the waste out or if it will still fill the internal storage. With the garbage transfer, it prefers to have the waste outside, I think? I'm not actually sure. Or it might even itself out between the storages. That could also happen. But yeah, we'll see if this slowly dissipates over time. Maybe at the end of each day. Not sure how much dissipates, if it's based on amount or if it's always the fixed number. Based on what material is inside the waste. We're at 0 0.3 tons right now. And day takes over, nothing has decreased yet. Maybe at the middle point of the day. 0 0.5. No decrease yet. Hmm. Seems to not be working. Maybe only if it rest. Oh, no, I think I saw a tick down there. For a short second, it ticked from 0 0.65 to 0 0.64. But it was, oh, there again, a minuscule tick down. So it seems to be based on the mount. As the storage slowly fills up, seems like the waste is slowly dissipating. Not sure if it's enough though. We might still have to have the free garbage dump. We'll see. If this ever runs full or something. Now it's picking up pace, so we have more workers in here. But yeah, let's see if it's enough or not. Didn't even know dumps had a decomposing mechanic. Yeah, they do. But only for the materials where it makes sense. So if you dump... The things that can decompose is mixed waste and hazardous waste. But you have to be aware of what is actually inside the waste. Biological waste, burnable waste and other waste can completely disappear if you spread them out across dumps and just let them take away. However, if you have metal scrap in there, aluminium scrap or construction waste, that one will not go away and slowly fill up your waste storages. So one thing we could be doing is um, taking all of the mixed waste from our incinerator and dumping it onto um, dumps instead of exporting. 
But I can't do that because sometimes our hazardous waste goes into the incinerator and then there's a little bit of metal scrap in there and it would slowly fill up the storages. Also sometimes when you play a game and you import hazardous waste, the hazardous waste actually has aluminium inside. So if you run into that situation it might actually make sense to recycle that further and get the aluminium and metal scrap out in the reclamation process. So you earn money from importing hazardous waste and you get steel and aluminium out of it. I think the sawmill was probably running too quickly. I would need multiple um, garbage dumps to dissipate it and I think it would make more sense to just export the waste instead. We can export from this garbage dump instead of the building directly, that would be fine. The loading would be really slow though. But at least we will have to export less, so some of it will go away by itself. I'm pretty successful with dissipating all my incinerator, incinerator ash with the five free dumps alone, city of 15,000. From time to time I collect the scraps and construction waste in there. I like using... I like using... Uh, I also do that. I like using a dump with a claw machine to gather all the materials that I want to dissipate. Or, I guess more, more sensibly would be these garbage con uh, transfers. I think at the beginning I used the claw machine one, but that that pales in comparison to this one. Especially since this one uses electricity, whereas this one just works, as long as you're using the large garbage trucks. And then from there you just pick it up and dump and have a distribution office that splits it up between the dump sites and since it always prefers the dump with the least amount of resources in it, it just spreads it out quite nicely. Just have to be aware that if you put hazardous waste on a garbage dump to dissipate, you generate a lot of pollution. But having it in such a storage doesn't matter. It does not generate pollution in here. That's why the garbage transfers or the garbage stands are so useful compared to dumps. Dumps can make waste dissipate, but they cause pollution while they do so. Which makes sense. Alright, I'll park the microbuses in here. If I need them again, I can pull them out. Okay, let's get the distribution office research. Twelve children. Another population spike ongoing. Up to 73 citizens, so population get, did go up. Reaching 50 workers soon, maybe? We have four people running through the university right now. It is a very slow process. Trying to stay profitable is the main challenge still. Okay, our profit on the western border went down significantly. Am I overdoing it with wood and board exports now? Well, the price of boards went down in general, so the price of wood also went down. Hopefully it recovers again. If it doesn't, um, maybe turning it into boards for export is not the right idea? I don't know. I would probably be willing to tear this whole thing down and resume regular wood exports instead. workers that's not enough I guess the buses are slowed down because it's winter and now it makes actual sense to have maybe I should have one dedicated bus bringing workers to the 
sawmill? No. We have our dedicated drop-off point here, but it's such a long route. Well, the profit margin is dipping down really low. And it's not really a profit margin anymore if you consider the fact that we will have to spend money on maintaining everything. I wonder what the profit on hazardous waste is nowadays. Uh, still a thousand rubles per truckload. Still not bad. The price went up a bit again. Yeah, I might tear down the sawmill if it stays that way. It might just be the dip in profitability of board and wood in general. Like we did add another logging camp. We now have the sawmill. Maybe the saw maybe the new logging camp put it over the edge. Maybe exporting that much that many boards at the same time put it over the edge and it will it will recover once things slow down a little bit. I don't know. I need to find another profit source. I need the I need the clothing factory. But I need the clothing factory in a way where I only run this with domestic workers. And we're not there yet, unfortunately. I don't even know when we are there. It will probably be a mix of foreign workers and domestic workers. Maybe I should already run it. I will build it. I think I'll build it. We'll get it set up. Maybe an industry with uni workers makes sense for this run in the longer run, I think, like uranium processing. <laughs> so, build a technical university and do the research towards uranium processing. I mean, the longer run, the, the goal is to get to a thousand people because I think when you reach that, it's probably like, okay, you've you've won, you're in a regular game now. It might even be earlier than that, but I think a thousand people is a stable point. Also, when you get to like 200, 300 people, getting to a thousand people shouldn't be that difficult anymore. I think we're still like in the phase where once we reach a hundred people, it's probably going to turn into our favor. But getting there, it's, it's a challenge. I like having a specific goal though. My previous challenge of New Karabadak was like, I didn't really set a goal. I wanted to keep car usage as high as possible. For the first Karabadak, I was at like 10,000 workers with two industries with cars only, and that one was not, that one was too much. But for the second Karabadak run, I didn't have a well-defined challenge. I thought I could set one up during the run, but I was just busy putting out fires. And when I started giving cars to our citizens, there were, the profitability took a nose dive. Things were really ag agile and mobile, but because vehicle repairs don't give you any scrap metal back, you're basically spending a lot of resources on repairing equipment. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit expensive repairing a lot of vehicles. It was more expensive for us to replace the, um, the personal vehicles and our other vehicles every few years because we had problems with the vehicle repairs. But after they got fixed, we were already too much in the hole, too much indebted with loans that we couldn't recover. One major heating problem could still end your run, true. I was thinking for when the challenge is done, you could happen what, what could happen in this Republic. Oh yeah, I mean... This is... Um, I don't know if, the, if you know the game, but there's a game called... Aurora 4X or Distant Worlds. Those are space strategy games, 4X games, where you have exploration and expanding through the universe. And they have a mode where it's called... Um, pre-warp 
So you basically start with without a warp drive. So your your ships fly at the speed that current spaceships fly, which, as you might think, um, as you might be able to imagine, is really bad for space exploration at a reasonable amount of time. This is basically uh, pre-pop. This is uh, pre-population, so we're basically in the pre-warp phase of uh, workers and resources, I would say. Pre-warp is the only way to play IMO, unless playing as pirate. Yeah, but I would compare this as pre-warp gameplay right now. This is pre-whatever is workers and resources normally. This is like exploring the intricacies of everything to the core and dealing with challenges that usually don't happen as in-depth. Our government loyalty went up to 37. Look at that. Do I have a favorite faction from that game? No, I haven't played it in a while. I did buy Distant Worlds 2, but it was released in a very poor state and I haven't given it another chance. They did release another faction pack. And I don't remember Distant Worlds Universe, unfortunately, to pick a favorite faction from there. It was probably a technology-based one. I usually don't do war that much. Also, I played it more as a sandbox game than as an actual challenge, which... It's like a Crusader Kings role-playing game kind of deal for me. Supposedly it's pretty good right now, but yeah, I haven't tried it yet. Okay, profits are back. Uh, how's the price? Of wood. Still low. Okay, not sure what the dip was about then. We did have to import more this month of something. Thought I was hyped up for it. I also thought it was a bit ambitious. Going through to 3D is a blessing and a curse. Everything looks kind of wonky. But it gives you a lot more flexibility and probably also performance improvements with the new engine. It did do a few changes that I don't know about, but... Well, they still have a lot of time. Why are you so slow? We need to pick up the pace on the wood stuff. I might have to... I thought I had enough workers here, but apparently not. Go back to 50%. Apparently we need all the workers that we can get. Thirteen workers instead of eight. But yeah, I was drawing like a weird comparison of like the pre-warp gameplay from that game. Where you don't do space exploration, you basically build up to the space exploration. This is pre pre-pop gameplay. You build up to the workers part before you actually can do something with them. Stellaris kind of covered a lot of what I wanted to get out of a more modern version of that game. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Stellaris went through a lot of different versions. I'm not sure what the gameplay actually is in that game right now. What I wanted was civilian traffic for a space game and a lot of things happening. I wanted f uh, I wanted four uh, uh, X4, like the X series, as a strategy game. So a lot of autonomous systems that interact with each other and you being a part of that system. Stellaris was mostly a civilization in space kind of game that turned into his grand strategy game. Which isn't bad, but not what I was looking for at the time. I still really enjoy Stellaris. Has a lot of DLC though as do most of the Paradox games. We got enough steel. Might be time for another aluminium transport at some point. I mean, we're building the clothing factory right now, which is going to take some resources to build. I wonder if I should send out the aluminium truck. Probably a good idea. It is winter though. That will be a bit slow, but... It come back. It'll come back uh, when the temperatures rise again, and then we might send it out one more time. Maybe our profitability on the western border is hindered by the amount of foreign manpower we didn't bring in because we were piling up 
so many boards and potential boards and wood. Also, I thought we had enough trucks. I'm not so sure anymore. Oh no, we should have enough trucks. Now we're cutting down enough wood again at least. Seems okay. I was a big fan of playing the Tikans. Pretty sure they got a bonus to civilian shipbuilding and trade boost. But small military ships. Yeah, I just like the the civilian infrastructure developing itself. So everything... It's basically like in Railroad Tycoon 3. My god, we're going through all of the old games right now. Well, two of them. One, one old game. Distant Worlds isn't that old, is it? It might be. But Railroad Tycoon 3 had an autonomous economy where everything was working without your, impo uh, in without your in uh, input. But you went in and basically made everything work efficiently. And that's where, where your profit came from. You saw that there was a route where people were using uh, horse carts to carry wood down a river, uh, to a river and then to the next town. You just build a railroad in that in that point instead. But if you had a if you had a logging camp right next to a river, then a train route might not be as profitable because they already have the the wood way to transport things efficiently enough. If the storage fills up, I'll have to change it. I mean, I will leave the storage here. It's good enough for us to dissipate some waste, but we might still we might have to put the garbage truck back and pull out waste here if this fills up. Right now, it seems like it's pushing all of the waste out into the dump, which is nice. I wonder how Eve Online is in that regard. I actually played Eve Online a long time ago. It was very repetitive. The downside of that game is that you can't fast forward. I moved over to the X series. The X series is um, EVE Online in single player. It was much more my to my enjoyment. You did have to unlock the fast forward in that game, but it came fairly early. Time compression. Also has a lot of mods. X4. Yeah, X4 is the latest one. I can recommend that. It's a good game. Seems a bit daunting even for me. I mean, the daunting part is that it's a universe, it's a universe that simulates itself rather than, rather than you being the hero. Everything still happens without you. At least like it simulates it that way. You have an impact because there's a story but you can also just go around and build an industry and just run as a corporate magnate trying to earn as much money and building up a private army. You don't have to follow the story if you don't want to, I think. It's a nice part. I would like some workers here, thank you. Hazardous waste incineration still ongoing sufficiently well. A thousand ruble per truck. During winter profit should go up. Uh, oh, not the profit, but the price for the hazardous waste. Because we will be importing less of it. And then during the rest of the year, we can make use of the gain profitability a bit. Looks like I placed the clothing factory back when I still had had it set to allow five workers onto the construction site. Let's turn that off. More concrete necessary? We're getting that from Brelov. Has to drive over here. I want as minimal traffic as possible on the Stralenia customs house. Because it still supplies the main workforce for the Lona trying to keep our people alive. I 
31 children, looking pretty good. Hopefully we can repeat the research to increase birth rate soon. I might research vitamins. I would like to research virology. Prepare a vaccination for a larger epidemic. Just to keep our population hardened and immunized and prepared for things. But no, the, the research of this is too much. I can't afford that. It's like 2,700 workdays plus another 2,200. That's something you should do if you have a lot of population, I guess. Vitamins, however, is something we can do. It takes 1,500 workdays. And it's a non-repeatable research continuously affecting your population. At least I think it's not repeatable. I don't remember it being that way. Okay, I'll set up the clothing factory. That will require fabric imports. I hope we got all the harvest in. Let's see. Last year, export. 550 tons of crops, which is what we produced, right? Production was that number, so we exported everything. Yeah, we exported everything. So we had the sufficient number of vehicles. And next year, these fields will be at 150%, giving us more harvest. And then these fields hopefully will be even higher. We'll put this to 150. I guess it's 149 maximum. I'll put it at 145 then. And these fields shouldn't reach that. But they... I don't know if they're going to be ready the year after. I don't know. I think we might need a, a third set of uh, fields for this. Just to have the ability to run three crop rotation cycles at maximum fertility for the most profit with no real input. assign all fields. These ones will be next. These ones are the lowest fertility and these ones should be ready for the year after at the very least. Factory could use a better route to the customs without going through main crossing. Yeah, but it's clothing. It's like it's a clothing factory running at the lowest productivity. It's going to make at most 1.2 tons of clothing a workday and we're going to run it at the point where it's probably going to make 0.12 tons of clothing. I'm not going to change the traffic route for that. It has so low throughput that it shouldn't really matter. Plus I don't have the space for a better route here except if I hooked it up to this way. I don't think there's going to be a point to it. Um, also some clothing will go to the um, shopping center and it has the best route for that. Our population has grown to 78 now, so the increase in ch um, birth rate has had an impact. Looking pretty good. I think the clothing factory coming online is going to be a good thing. We won't have any more or less workers in this area. So we will have a continuous amount of workers in the area anyway and then if we put them into the clothing factory while running the other buildings with our own workers or vice versa it doesn't really change much i don't know if it's going to be profitable but we'll find out if we have a few of our own workers working in there it should it should be fine might be able to reduce the amount of um, workers in the medical university again once we're done with the research for sure there's a lot of people working here. We basically have a full extra set of workers working in this facility right now to allow them to study and do the research at the same time, which is a little bit of 
a waste, I think. I think we should just focus on the research. Yeah, let's focus on the research. Let the other ones go to the medical university if they want to. One more concrete truck delivery, and then we have all the resources necessary for the construction of the clothing factory. I remember the first time when the update dropped and I was building my heat, my large heating plant right next to my town, as you do. And then it was running and it was running and at some point, oh, there was maintenance and the efficiency of the heating plant dropped down and a lot of people died. I don't know, that was, re that was really cool. Because back then I thought I needed two heating plants to run in tandem, so when one heating plant was undergoing maintenance, I needed the other one to take its place. I mean, right now the same thing can happen. If you have a, if you have three heat exchangers connected to the heating plant and you run it at full capacity, supplying so much heat to a town that when it's running, it needs to run at full efficiency at all times, the maintenance triggers and suddenly your efficiency goes down to 70% you have problems if you can't deal with the maintenance at a reasonable amount of time and of course if the maintenance happens during summer then you don't notice it but it did happen during winter for us and it was definitely noticeable where's the last concrete it's taking its time getting here we need a lot of concrete, maybe I should switch over the concrete gathering to this customs house. I guess things will speed up as soon as um, the month takes over. Big population boom so far. Yeah, 10 extra workers. Not workers, uh, citizens. So we have a larger number of children again. We have to keep them healthy. And move them over to the workforce. 10 extra workers would mean 3 extra workplaces that we could run. wonder if we can get to a hundred, maybe next episode. Lots of children. The justice system will have to run fully efficiently as soon as we turn it on. There's no other way to it. As soon as we run it and we put people in prison, then those people would lose their children unless we also run the orphanage. So all of these things I will count as the same thing. We'll have to run the prison full-time, we'll have to run a sufficient number of workers in the police station and courthouse, and we will have to run the orphanage full-time, probably with foreign workers at a good lo uh, loyalty setting, so we can actually earn loyalty rather than losing it. And we might even have to institute a secret police to make sure that our own workers who don't have enough loyalty don't work in the orphanage and we just run this building with foreign workers. So I might have to get the secret police research. I figure you can cut labor on cops now. Well, we need the cops at some point to find the crimes, but yes, I did turn that one off again. Until we actually can run the whole system. Just running the cops and seeing what, how much crime happens doesn't really benefit us. We're hiding it right now. It's fine. Uh, duh, 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 this year, no serious crime. Last year, one serious crime, so the same as the year before that. It is picking up pace, criminality is going up quite high. We can check everything on the one building that we have. 9% criminality, so it's ever increasing the longer we take. But we can't fight it yet. Do police act as a deterrent to crime at all, directly by working there? No. Not from my experience. What they do do is uh, they pick up the crime, they hold it inside the police station for until it runs out of statute of limitation. And when it runs out, or when you cancel it manually, does it trigger the effect on your happiness at that point? That's my experience. I'm not sure if it's true, but that's what I think it does. 
So as long as the crime is running through the justice system and still handled, it doesn't cause any negative effect. Except for when you have um, a serious crime where someone got murdered, then it does affect the health of that citizen, obviously. I guess I don't really know what triggers a criminal to do crime. I think? I, I don't know. I think people are born with a more higher, a lower or higher tendency to do crime. And then if you don't deal with them, if they do trigger a crime, which might happen just because they have a high tendency, or because they were missing a demand, like trying to drink alcohol and not finding any, and then just they smacked someone. If they do trigger a crime then and they don't get handled, then their criminality goes up. So some people at the age of 47, 0% criminality, no tendency to do crime. And previously we had a person who was like 25 and they already had 33% criminality. I wonder what they're at right now. Looking for someone at a higher criminality than 33%. Maybe they got murdered. There they are. 35, 43% criminality. What the hell? What the hell? <sighs> I have an ad blocker, stupid YouTube. They played an ad. I'm gonna turn on the game music. I'm not gonna listen to any ad on stream. Looks like um, YouTube changed their method of distributing ads again and it started playing. So we're not gonna listen to that. When I wake up, I eat breakfast, then it's time to do the crime. Yeah. So I think this is the person who was like 25 years old and at 33% criminality, their crime went up. Weren't able to do sports. Maybe they went mad and drowned someone for it, I don't know. We don't know because we don't have a police station that is running right now. We can't really tell. Uh, definitely not making a profit this time. Uh, what did we import on the western border that was so costly? Aluminium, right, right. My truck finally arrived. I thought we had an import for the repair station, but no. It's a truck that I sent out. It finally arrived and took some money. Sure, if crime is successful and doesn't get punished, people do it again, like in real life. Yep. Weird how that is. If you can do something and it gives you a benefit, why would you stop doing it? She stole her way to 3.04 electronics, oh my god. She's doing computer crime in 1971. She has a computer. She's doing digital crime already. She has a scam website. Can't believe it. Might not have many um, clients. Or like victims, but... Gotta start early, I guess. Okay, now we're getting a lot of workers again. Well, the profitability is, uh, was high at least a month before February, so can't see that right now. In January we had a decent amount of profit. I'll leave it the way it is. We're running through all the wood that we are chopping down. So the sawmill is not the choke point. Do have to replant some trees though. Where's the logging camp? We have our logging camp here. And we have one over here. And the last one over here. In the 70s didn't they use tapes or something? They used that well into the 90s. 
Oh, you mean like for computers? Did they? Didn't they had? Um, uh, I don't want to. They they used like I don't know what the English word they they lose. Was it relay tubes? Maybe they used like mechanical computers back then. Punch tape, yeah. I don't know when they switched over. They used mechanical computers into electronic computers during World War II era. I'm not exactly sure what and when it switched over, but calculating machines were used before then. But doing internet crime in the 1970s is a bit daft. One of the places I worked at had a CNC that was built to run off punch tape code. That sounds interesting and difficult. Okay, we're slowly getting the concrete. Um, we didn't make any profit last month or this month. Because our input uh, import costs were so high, apparently. Let's validate our hazardous waste, that it is still profitable. Still a thousand rubles, still looking okay. I wasn't used that more way anymore, I had a digi digital retrofit. Okay. So an easier way to enter code then. Heating plants stopping operation for a little bit, that's no problem. Okay, so sowing these fields. These ones will not get to 145% fertility in the time that the sowing season happens. And these ones, I don't know if there will be an overlap between these two fields, but I think these ones will be ready, these ones will not be ready. I'll have to wait and see if that's actually true. How much are we spending on concrete? Concrete is quite expensive. So 40 tons of concrete are a thousand ruble. Okay. It's not that expensive, never mind. I mean, it's expensive as in this is about as much as we get for a truck full of wood. But we get way more wood exported than we are importing concrete. I wasn't paying attention to money. It's cutting it pretty close now. Yeah, I did send out an aluminium truck, so that should give us a little bit of buffer time. And then we'll have the clothing factory up, which um, we'll have to we'll have to import some fabric to run it. Not sure why the profitability is so low. It's probably because of the construction, but it shouldn't be just that. Lots of st why did we do steel import? I have a lot of steel sitting around here. Um, distribution office, you. I guess you're also picking. Okay. Uh, you are allowed to pick up steel here, so that's fine. Prefab, brick, uh, gravel, right? Yeah, gravel, boards, no steel. That should be it. So the only steel we take is the one that we get from the western border. Looks like we were still importing steel instead of taking it from, the, from that storage, even though it's set to load from here. Not sure why I didn't prefer that one. We'll set this as a warning to when it runs empty, so we have to trigger another um, delivery of steel from the western border to here. Okay, we're making a profit again. Halfway through the month, 2000 US dollars. 
we can get double that, that would be okay. That would be nice. The vehicles will last a relatively long time, so... We were able to pay back the purchases of vehicles before that with an income of about 2,000 US dollars per month. And we got a few extra vehicles and extra buildings. So, doubling our profit and should be, should be doable, I imagine. Nine students in the university right now. I'm not sure if they're still going to the party HQ, but hopefully they are all smart enough to go to the medical university instead. Because we're only doing research here. I hope we can turn off this building fairly soon. That will free up like 30 workers per workday. And doing other things. All of these buildings look pretty good, like they're quite well filled. We might be getting to the point where we might not be able to unload all of the workers anymore from the bus at some point. And that's the point where we know that we do have enough workers. But with the clothing factory, we will have a lot of space for workers to actually go to before that happens. Thirty-four thousand rubles. The fields are ready. It just ticked over um, 145% fertility. I hope six fields will be enough to run the crop rotation. But yeah, I don't... I guess we could have more and more fields. And try and use this setup more and more. Since we have a fire station that can extinguish any fire that happens here. Having more farms wouldn't be that much of of a problem. How much profit did we make from that last year? 17,000. It wasn't that much. But I mean it will be a continuous profit throughout our life cycle and the vehicles didn't get worn out from that. So they can last for quite a while before it becomes a problem. Not sure why we're losing so much money now. Was it really this? It must have been the steel import, right? Did some plastics import for the repairs? Continuously importing hazardous waste for a profit? Let's check the prices on uh, lumber. Okay, the price is trying to go back up. So hopefully we'll see an increase in profitability. Didn't quite get to 4,000 US dollars this month. But we did import things. We did some fuel import, so otherwise we would have reached that. Why is concrete taking so long to get here? It's all asphalt road. I guess the vehicles are really slow. They only drive like 60 kilometers an hour. 70. Never mind. They are not the slowest vehicles we have. I don't know them. Loyalty is back down to 35, so we had a drop again. I would like to do the research of the secret police. I would like to be prepared for making sure that we only move the most loyal people into our orphanage, into our universities. We could still use the foreign workers for that, 
they do arrive with decent loyalties. Like some of them are over 50%. And if you can move them into the appropriate facilities, that would be nice. But then again, we don't have that many experts. So it might actually not be easily possible to make sure we can run the facilities that re actually require loyalty to be higher. University education, 50% loyalty. Maybe we have to take the experts from this customs house and bring them over. Send them on a bus trip down to Wattstown. Come on, profit. Thank you. This is cutting it really close. I think I'm going to do another aluminium transportation run. I would like to stay around 100,000. There could always be emergencies. And not having to go into debt is kind of our priority. The western border, while it is very profitable, it is also our parachute, I guess. I would rather take out loans in western currency than eastern ones. Okay, it looks like our waste dissipation over here is insufficient. So... We are still going to bring the waste mm -hmm. to the customs house. Or do I try the free dump again? I think we're just making too much waste here. I mean, I could place down all of the free dumps and see if we can dissipate everything. Let's just use two extra free dumps with a dirt road for each. We'll put the garbage truck back into the technical service after I assign the mixed waste mm -hmm. to be dumped. I guess, oh no, I, can't, I can only assign it to one dump. I would need a distribution office to do that instead. Well, we'll try one dump and see what happens. If this doesn't work, then I'll probably just send it over to the customs house and rest easy in the um, knowledge that we are dissipating some of the waste, so we don't have to export everything. Although this building will require maintenance at some point. I wonder what kind of materials it will use. It might use gravel, but that's okay. Okay, customs dump free. We'll have to wait until the storage runs full, and then this one runs full, and then it'll haul stuff over into the free dump. And it might be enough to dissipate everything, we'll see. Maybe the small build dump isn't actually good at dissipating things. The large one definitely is. I've used those ones quite successfully. I will build the clothing factory with workers that walk here man uh, like by themselves instead of sending a construction office vehicle. We can just build this slowly over time. Making a profit this month, very good. Oh yeah, I recently found out that the reconstruction of concrete of statues needs concrete. Yeah. I have all of the vehicles inside uh, inside our maintenance construction offices. Open hull, covered hull, dump truck, road crane, concrete mixer, and a bus. And they're handling maintenance. Depending on how worn the building gets, 
they will use more and more materials. So if you do a reconstruction on a burned down building at 90%, I think they will also start using gravel and concrete. Because they assume that the foundation got damaged. But if a building is already mainly made out of um, concrete, then they will need concrete and steel. Right away. So it depends on what the building is made out of and how damaged it is. If all the resources get delivered here, we might still send a bus, but we'll see. 53 workers, five, over five times the amount that we started with. All of them having a higher, universe, uh, uni higher education given to them by our universities. Having two universities is a little bit silly, but the medical university was definitely the right choice. I don't think we would be here without it. We could have probably done without the party HQ, but the distribution office is also quite important for us, especially since money has become such an issue. Maybe after the next aluminium upgrade uh, delivery, not upgrade, after the next aluminium delivery I will tackle the upgrade of this road to the first gas station. It would speed up travel quite a bit. Rain wouldn't slow it down anymore, or barely slow it down. Would be a nice upgrade. Do some reconstruction of the terrain to remove the rough bits around the road a little bit. There's some more pieces here that could be removed. Some people don't like the packed dirt at all. I think there might be mods or features where you can remove the packed dirt from underneath the roads, but I do like it. It does make sense, the road the road has to be built on packed terrain, otherwise um, it's not going to be stable. more deliveries of concrete and then we can finish the clothing factory until then we will wait and see how far the construction gets by itself with just workers walking onto the construction site the research of the distribution office is almost done and then this university will be shut down until we need it again for the secret police running our education system our Especially our orphanage. Running that at the highest loyalty will be necessary. I don't think the tutors need to have a university education, right? No, they don't. So just for that thing, for that building, it will, will be really useful having a secret police in this area. Because then the foreign workers who have really high loyalty can just work in that building. Making sure that our children are really loyal towards our nation. Even if we don't have loyal people ourselves. We'll put the most loyal citizens in the universities, in the orphanage. A decent amount of loyalty inside the prison. Like, only make sure, make sure that no disloyal people work here, I guess. We shouldn't really run into the problem of having a lot of disloyal people. Unless we run into a crime problem. Getting to a thousand citizens, we will definitely have to see if we can deal with crime in our republic. Which is currently spreading like wildfire, but being muted by the fact that... Um, I don't know. Apparently, like low population count, the crime effect might be lowered. A thousand ruble, very nice. 
Seems like inflation is starting to kick in. The US dollar becoming... The US dollar price is becoming lower than the ruble prices. How much electricity are we using? Nothing from here, apparently. Oh, I did turn it off. Uh, 0 0.2 megawatts-ish. Not sure if the other one is still hooked up. Turn that one off for now. Okay, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 megawatts is what we're using right now. I'll keep both of them turned on, so in case of... I guess it doesn't really matter. Nothing can start a fire on the route before they merge. And if a transformer catches fire, then it doesn't matter because there's only one connection to it. We don't have redundancy in our electrical grid with multiple transformers and substations. 21 years old, 1.9 education level, you're almost done. Hopefully going to move into the workforce fairly quickly. 81 citizens. We need to have a few more before I can say we need just 10 times more than what we have. If we get to 100, I think that would be nice. 100 workers would be really good. But that's still a ways off. Like, if all of the children move into the workforce, I think we're going to get to like 70. 70 workers, maybe. But it's starting to become noticeable, I think, that the population growth is... It's continuously happening now. Not in the beginning where we're like dabbling on and trying to stay afloat. As soon as we got the medical university, things kicked off big time for us. And we have to keep that research going. No matter what happens, it has the highest priority. The research of the distribution office is nearing completion, and then this university will be shut off until we need it again. Got an epidemic. Severe health complications. Many citizens can be infected. Not sure how long it will take. Well, our clinic is staffed, so... And we only have to treat our own citizens, so not a lot of people that... I guess we are 82 people. But a clinic should be able to handle that. I don't even know if we need a, a hospital to get to a thousand people. Probably not. Everything I have built in this area should be enough to get to a thousand people, I think. Except for the housing, which hasn't been built yet, but the rest is in place. Come on. Finish the research. And we'll kick out all of the party officials. Yeah, all of the waste is moving into storage. It's not balancing itself. It's pushing all of the waste out. So it'll wait until this is completely full before it starts accumulating waste in here again. And the technical service does not take waste from a dump because it's a destination, it's not a source of waste. And we'll try dumping it onto the free dump and see if that helps. Uh, research is done. That means we can turn you off. After you've done your... Um, your lesson, I guess. Okay. That's it. No more party HQ. Go find a place. 
to work somewhere else. Profit on the western border. Made about 2,000 US dollars last month if we didn't account for the uh, aluminium being transported. So I think we're okay. Is ongoing. Taking a little bit of money out of our profit, but that's okay. I hope we can wring a profit out of the clothing factory. Maybe I should start lowering the amount of workers getting here. The workers going to the heating plant and um, the incinerator is definitely still necessary. But then again, we're only getting 20% uh, workers here, so... It's not that many workers anyway. It's just a... Uh, it's just some extra workers to help work with things. But maybe we could, we could remove them and still run everything successfully? What if I turn off the foreign workers in this area? I don't know if we have enough. Would that be something I should attempt? Let's see. Let's say we have... Let's say we have 9 workers in every regular building and 18 workers in every building that has two shifts. So three here plus three here is six and then times three is 18 for three shifts per day. 18, 36. Okay this one is a lot of potential workers. Uh, 45. That one's only set to two. Oh god doing the math. We definitely are already at 45 and we don't have that many workers. I think we still need the additional workers, especially when we start running the clothing factory. If we get to 100 workers I would feel comfortable with this area running itself, I think. I might have to micromanage the amount of workers going to the university buildings, to the clinic. <coughs> But because they try to fill these buildings first, the buildings with like university education, they try to cram with as many people as possible, which makes sense because they do have a university education. So they have a desire to work in a workplace that actually um, suits their education level. How's the price of hazardous waste? It, the price decreased a little bit and then went back up. I don't think adding another truck is going to be a good idea. I'm happy that it's still at a thousand, but that might also be related to inflation. Because the US dollar price went down to 900, so we lost a little bit. But we basically gained another truckload full of um, material being converted, so some extra profit. Sewing season is... well for us it's already over. Fields have grown halfway. They are nearing 100% fertility, I think they're going to be ready for next year. And you're a little bit far behind, which is intentional. We'll see if we can run a crop rotation. Get an extra 17,000 rubles per year. 
Maybe, no, we're gonna get more, we're gonna get 50% more. So we'll get like 25,000. Money reserves has been going down quite a bit. The investments that we have made have to stand by themselves. And we might be able to tap our US currency again a little bit later. On the eastern border, the clothing factory is nearing completion. If it is if it will be profitable or not, I am fairly certain that it will be. Because I assume it will attract enough workers by itself. Pollution shouldn't be an issue. There's no other polluting building in this area anymore except I guess the logging camp creates pollution. No it doesn't. Only the sawmill does. So yeah, I hope this will bring a decent amount of profit that will climb up over time as our population grows and more workers can go into this facility. And I hope it won't have a negative impact to our citizens living here. We'll have to kill, keep a close eye on to our average lifespan so that it doesn't drop down to the low 75 I would say. Fifty-two workers, thirty children. Lots of 7 to 15 year olds, so that's where the birth rate increase is. Maybe we'll be able to repeat the research fairly soon again. I mean, it's still looking fairly good. If I didn't do a lot of changes to our buildings, trying to wring ever, an ever-increasing amount of profit from things, it would probably be looking better right now, but diversifying our exports is also a good idea. So running wood, running boards, running crops, clothing, should prepare us a little bit better for the future. And since we don't have any loans, any green number is a good number. Let's check the wood slash board situation on the western border again real quick. The sawmill is running as fast as it can. That's running fine. Not sure where it's pulling the trees from right now. Oh, directly from within the storage, I assume. Hmm. 600 rubles, 560 US dollars per truckload. I don't know. I don't know if the extra investment was worth it. Theoretically, you could attach three lumber camps directly to the sawmill and then export from the sawmill directly. To make this way more compact and not use as much fuel. But then you would spend a lot of time regrowing trees every now and then. Until you get the research that automates it. Five more deliveries of concrete. This should complete before the end of the year. I guess I did remove one of the concrete mixers over to the maintenance construction office. Let's assign the maintenance construction office to help with this construction, which will bring the concrete mixer as well as a bus, I guess. 
but that should speed things up. I forgot that I removed one of the concrete mixers and moved it over to the other side. No wonder things have been a bit slow. But it did keep up with the construction, like the amount of workers walking onto the construction site has kept the amount of concrete to about the same level. Now that we're bringing a bus here, um, things might be a bit faster. Two micro buses. Why two? Oh, I also have a micro bus in here, right. Hmm, that explains why it was always about the same. Never mind then. How much concrete do you carry? Not 10 tons, 12 tons. No 10 tons. Then, I don't know. We'll need at least four more deliveries. With two trucks, that shouldn't take too long. But yeah, the microbuses will bring additional workers here, if they can. Costing us a little bit extra money, but that's okay. I currently have no plan to build a distribution office that I want right now. If I want, if I build one, it's going to be down here, replacing our citizen goods distribution office. These vehicles will probably become obsolete, being replaced by these ones, and then this distribution office can handle. Um, the crop transportation, as well as the distribution of materials towards our citizens. We'll have one extra vehicle extra, because I do have um, a refrigerated truck that needs to be in storage as well, inside the distribution office. But I could just move one of the vehicles over into storage and have it become a replacement vehicle in case we need to replace one of our existing ones. Okay, can we... Uh get the concrete mixers again. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes I wish I could say bring all the resources here, then build the building. Usually I micromanage it. But at some point your nation gets so large that it doesn't work anymore. Right now I'm a little bit lazy. Maybe going back to exporting wood would be better. Yeah, I think so. I think exporting just wood was more profitable. I think the sawmill might be... I don't know if the sawmill is more profitable. It doesn't feel like it. Directly exporting the lumber seemed to be the way to go. might have to reduce the amount of workers again. Seems like I have a few too many. Uh, let's see. Let's go down to 40% and reduce the amount of workers here down to 15. I know it's not filling up to 15, but I don't know how the balancing works. If it's taking, if it's trying to fill both buildings to 50% of, of their capacity, if it's trying to balance between the two buildings, or if it fills them up to the same number until it hits a limit. I think it's the same number. But yeah, we're just reducing the amount of foreign workers here. We have too many. That should increase profitability a little bit. We're spending a lot of money here on foreign workers that we could reduce a little bit to bring some extra profit out of that border. Maybe allow only auto search toggle if resources are present. Yeah, something like that. I mean... I usually put them in their own construction office, but... Once you start doing maintenance, you really need a, construction, uh, a bus in the construction office, so it handles reconstruction automatically. So what I would really need is a construction office that does the construction, and a construction office that does the maintenance. Two more deliveries of concrete, and then we're done. And then we'll spend a lot of money on getting fabric into the clothing factory. 
and hopefully earning a little bit of profit from that. the last delivery and then our clothing factory is up which we will have to maintain and make good use out of so that we do actually have a benefit from it fabric imports are allowed in the distribution office we just have to add the clothing factory We'll have to disable clothing imports and instead turn on clothing exports. Hello Thomas one Mac. Thank you very much for the follow. Much appreciated. I hope I didn't butcher your name too much. Alright, there we go. Clothing factory is up and running. We'll leave the amount of workers in here the way it is. And just set up the distribution. Well, it wasn't too expensive. 6,000 rubles. Still fairly early on. Resources are still not as expensive. Why are you loading waste from this building? Why is this building not hooked up to any waste storage? I guess I built it later after all of the other ones and didn't consider it. Oh well. I mean the clothing factory also doesn't have a waste storage attached to it. And the waste generation in this area is not too high yet, but... Yeah, I probably need to make sure that I don't forget about that. If I could you get you and the clothing factory in range, that would be the best case scenario. But there's a... Um, there's a switch in the way, so that's not going to work. Plus, next to the clothing factory, you might actually want to have a large storage for separating out biological waste, which we could, in theory, turn into fertilizer. But I don't plan on doing that just yet. I'll place it down. I won't build this yet. I want money to be on the up before we make any change here. This is going to be a really, really slow production of resources. Hopefully the machinery doesn't wear very quickly if we are building so slowly. But yeah, I'm not sure running it with foreign workers is going to be the best thing. Sometimes, however, there will be our own workers walking into this construction, into this production line, and then it would be profitable. And the more our population grows, the more of our own workers will walk into the production line. At some point, I might build a warehouse here, so, so we have our own storage for clothing. But then again, this is consumed very slowly and when it, when it drops down to 1.3 tons the next finished production set of clothing in the factory will be brought to the shopping center hmm 
Hmm. I mean, everything looks relatively okay. Profit is a little bit low. We did do the fabric import this month, right? Yeah. So that's why we are not seeing any profit this month. Otherwise it would be okay. It's quite a large number of workers going in here. Does that mean all the other places are already sufficiently staffed? Looks like it. It's putting a lot of workers here. Seven workers versus, well, the indoor pool not having enough, apparently. Shopping center running with our own. Let's try and reduce the amount of workers we get from this area down to 10%. Unloading only 5% to the bus stop before then unloading the rest. So we're trying to now reduce the amount of foreign workers that go to Lolona in an effort to increase productivity, profitability, and also to see if we can slowly become independent in this area, which would be great. Um, if, we can, can, if we can become fully independent on foreign workers in this area, as I said, we will still need foreign workers that go into the orphanage to work there. To make sure our children from citizens who have been sentenced to prison will be treated as best as possible. Government loyalty went up to 37 again. Okay, so we have a reduced amount of workers now. We'll have to see if we run into any issues. If we don't, maybe we can try running it down to 0%. Basically half the amount of money we have to pay for foreign workers in this area. And that might lead to the amount of foreign workers at the customs house slowly going up again. But yeah. Other than that, everything is looking pretty good. We dropped a lot in the money that we have, but we had we made a large investment into infrastructure. Had to move a lot of currency from US dollars into rubles for the fact that we... Well, we built a farm and we built a clothing factory and that wasn't cheap. Also, we didn't really use the steel that we brought in from the western border and instead continuously imported from the customs house, which didn't really appreciate. Um, now we have to wait and see if we can make a profit with the new clothing factory, I guess. With foreign workers, probably not. But I'm not willing to turn off the amount of foreign workers that we get completely just yet. I might do that next episode. For now, I am however going to bid you farewell, I'm going to take a break. We are going to raid Satellier, I think. And we'll continue this next time. We did build a farm, which will give us some profit throughout the years, shouldn't take up too much time. And the clothing factory, we will have to wait and see what happens with that. But yeah, as I said, thank you very much for watching. If you would like to participate in this in the raid, just stick around. If not, have a good day, take care, and to everyone, as always, maybe I'll see you next time.